All right, in this video, I wanna continue with our example on linear regression. So in a previous video, we came up with this example and it was supposed to be a kid selling hot chocolate on different days and we kept track of how many sales the kid made on each day and we also kept track of the temperature on that day. And we saw, generally speaking, that on hotter days, the kid sells less hot chocolate. Yeah, that makes sense. No one's trying to buy hot chocolate when it's really hot out. But on cold days, people might be more interested in buying hot chocolate. We saw that there is a negative relationship between our explanatory variable, temperature in this case, and our response variable, sales. When the explanatory vari variable goes up, meaning when I go to the right on my graph, generally speaking, the response variable, the Y, goes down. Generally speaking, the heights are down. So if I read this thing from left to right, generally speaking, the dots are going down. And that idea of correlation, we talked about a lot in the previous video. In this video, I wanna quantify that correlation a little bit better. All right, yeah, okay, I guess I can kind of look at this and tell that the dots are kind of sort of going down, but it would be nice if I could describe that relationship a little bit more precisely than just, yeah, don't you kind of see it, how it kind of sort of goes down when you read it from left to right? And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna change all these dots into a line. Specifically, we're gonna let our calculator or whatever software you use, figure out the line that best fits the data. And when I say best fits the data, uh, I'm eventually going to define that for you. But right now, we don't have the terminology necessary to explain what I mean by best fits the data. But I think most people kind of get the point of it. If, if I forced you to draw a line that goes through these dots as well as possible, maybe you draw something that, I don't know, kind of sort of looks like that, right? Loosely speaking. And if you drew that, great. And if you're like, no, nah, I would have drawn something that looks like that, fine. That's fine too. And somebody else is like, no, nah, I would have drawn it like that, whatever. The point is, all these lines fit this data pretty well. If somebody else came out here and we're like, yeah, I'm gonna draw this line right here, that line doesn't fit the data at all, right? This line has nothing to do with these different dots here. The red ones, you could all argue, you could argue that they all fit the data pretty well. We're gonna have one specific criteria of what it means to best fit the data. But again, I can't define that for you just yet, but I will, I promise. But the point is your calculator is gonna give you the line that best fits the data. And that'll be really useful to have the line that best fits the data because you can't really make predictions with a bunch of dots here. But if I had a line, I could use that line to do a lot of things like make predictions. So what we do in 7.2 in our book is we calculate, calculate this thing called the LSR line. And LSR stand, stands for least squared residual line. When we say that a line best fits the data, the criteria we're using to define best is this least squared residual idea. But because we haven't defined what a residual is just yet, I can't explain it any better than that for now, but trust me, I'll come back to this. The LSR line is the line that best fits the data according to this criteria, which will make sense later. But for now, all you need to do is figure out how to come up with a line. And before we come up with that line, maybe a re little refresher on lines. Uh, maybe you learned about lines in a, like an algebra class, pre-calculus class. Uh, in your typical algebra class, you're told that a line, the equation of a line, is of the form y equals mx plus b, where m and b are constants. m represents the slope, kind of a measure of steepness, and b represents the y-intercept. All the y-intercept is, is the point at which the line intersects the y-axis, which is this vertical axis right here. So if you had a line like y equals 2x minus 5, the way you could graph that is you'd say, well, it's y-intercept is at negative 5, b is negative 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's right here. And then its slope, how steep the line is, is 2. And the way slope is defined is how much does the line go up each time it takes one step to the right. So what I'm saying is from this point, I should go up two units each time I take one step to the right. So up two over one, up two over one, up two over one, All right? And that defines this line there. Y equals two X minus five looks like this as far as the graph. That's how you learn about lines in an algebra class. In a statistics class, it's gonna be similar, except we're not gonna use the letters Y equals MX plus B. In a statistics class, typically what you do is you use the letters y equals ax plus b. But the good news is that the b still represents the y-intercept and the a still represents the slope. I think it might help you to, rather than think about this as y-intercept, 
Think about this as the predicted value of y when x equals zero. And if you're really good with the geometry of these lines in the first place, you might be able to see that, yeah, that's the exact same thing, right? The value of y when x, how far left and right I am is zero, is exactly the y-intercept. When x equals zero, I'm on the y-axis. The value of y when x equals zero is exactly the y-intercept. And think about a as how much we expect y to increase by each time x increases by one. And that might be, seem like a strange way of defining this value a here. Uh, but again, if you're really good with the geometry in these, you might be able to talk yourself into that being the exact same as what the slope is. All the slope is is how much y changes by for a unit change in x. That's all it is. So it's really the exact same thing over here. But what I'm going to ask you to do is interpret the coefficients on your LSR line and thinking about them according to these two phrases as opposed to these two phrases will be really useful to you. So if you remember anything from lines in the past, if this helps you at all, great. But rather than think about this in terms of the green, think about it in terms of the blue going forward. So how do we come up with the line? Well, if you want to come up with the line, you need a bunch of data. So we have this data from before. Uh, if you want your calculator to use this data, you better put it into a list. We already did that in a previous video. You hit stat and then edit. I put the temperature, my X values into L1 and sales, the Y values into L2. And then once you have all that data in there, uh, we can go to stat and then calc and linreg AX plus B. You might be like, that's what we already did. That's where we found this value of R. That's true. But there are other outputs from that screen that we did not use that I want to draw your attention to now. So I'll tell it that my X values are in L1 and my Y values are in L2. And if you have a different version of the calculator, you just put in L1 comma L2, and then you can hit calculate. And it spits out all this information. If you're only seeing A, B, but not R and R squared, make sure you turn on your diagnostics. Maybe refer to the prior video on how to do that. Uh, but this A and this B here are exactly the A and the B in this equation, Y equals AX plus B, which is exactly the equation of your LSR line. So what I'm saying in this example, if I round to, I don't know, three decimal places, is that y is equal to negative 1.533 times x plus b, which is 167.540, I guess rounded to three decimal places. This is my LSR line. So if I want the line that best fits this data, that line is given by this equation right here. And you could graph that line if you remembered how to graph lines in terms of y-intercepts and slopes, and that'll work perfectly fine. But since you're already making a scatter plot on your calculator, I can just show you how to include the LSR line on your scatter plot. I mean, we already know some features of it, right? B, the y-intercept, the y value when x equals zero should be 167.5. So this was poor planning, 110, 20, 30, 40, 150, 60, 70, 167.5, my line should go through something like this. And then each time I take one step to the right, I should be going up by negative 1.533. In other words, down by negative 1.533. Since these are scaled in terms of tens, each time I take 10 steps to the right, I should go down by about 15. So when I go 10 steps to the right, I should go down by about 15. 10 more steps to the right, down by about 15. Maybe a better way to think about it is if I go 100 steps to the right, I should go down by 153. So from 167, if I went down by 153, I'd be at a height of like 14 or so. I think it should go through this dot. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa you lost me there. You got these two dots. I don't understand at all what you did. Okay, don't worry about it. All you got to do is write down these numbers and then hit Y equals here. So we've hit second and then y equals a bunch of times to tell it that we want different stat plots. If you just hit y equals, this is where you can program equations into your calculator and it'll graph these equations. So for example, if I want to graph this equation, I can just say negative 1.533 times x. My calculator has a special key for whatever the variable is. Is this x comma t comma theta comma n. Hit this one and an x will pop up here. Don't use the X that is above the, where is it? This key, don't use that X, use this X. And then plus 
7.54, and that's my LSR line. And now when I go back to make my scatter plot, maybe you remember how to do that from a previous video. Uh, we made scatter plots by hitting second and then y equals, telling it that we wanted a scatter plot, and then either zoom stat or program the window appropriately. And then you can hit graph. And now not only do we see the dots, but we also see our LSR line. And you might notice that that LSR line, if I zoomed out a little bit, I'd see that it would cross my Y axis at negative 167. Let's see, I'll change my window a little bit here. Maybe instead of stopping my Y values at 130, I have them go all the way up to 170. And if I make that change, now I'll be able to see the top of my LSR line. That's 170, slightly below it, there's that 167. And what my LSR line is gonna do, is it's gonna be kind of drawing a straight line that is pretty close to this big clump of data that I have here and ends up just above these last observations. If I go to trace here and I go down to my observation on the 104 degree day, around the 104 degree day where I sold one cup of hot chocolate, that's that flashing point that you could barely see. The line just barely goes above that. Oh, right, because it's supposed to go through that point. If I connect these guys with a straight line or at least as straight as I can draw it on a computer, which isn't all that straight, try again. This is way harder than you'd think. Maybe, uh, oh well, whatever. Maybe it looks like that. Right, maybe that is close enough to this. Maybe on a test, I'm gonna ask you to sketch a scatter plot of your data and to include an LSR line. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but what I would like to see is evidence that you really did make this correctly. Right, if your LSR line looks pretty close to this, we're good. Maybe it's not an art class, but like maybe you can notice that, okay, it goes slightly above this observation here and slightly above this last observation here but below all of these observations in here i don't know try your best i guess is the point that i'm trying to make to draw something that uh, you see i can't even do it so how picky can i possibly be anyways there's your lsr line the purpose of this video was to be able to come up with that lsr line to be able to sketch it on a scatter plot and then to be able to interpret your lsr line the typical prompts, the thing I'll ask you to do, calculate your LSR line. There it is, I'm done. Um, interpret the coefficients. That's where you tell me what negative 1.533 means in terms of temperature and hot chocolate. What 167.54 means in terms of temperature and hot chocolate. So what you can do if you understand these two facts is that the number in place of B, 167.54 in this example, is the predicted value of Y when X equals zero. Remember the idea here is we're arguing that we can predict Y based on X. X is the cause, Y is the effect. So the predicted amount of sales when X equals zero. X is the temperature. So what this is telling me is that I would predict there to be 167.54 sales if the temperature were zero. Maybe something like on a zero degree day, I'd expect, or we'd expect, whatever, 167.54 sales. You might argue you can't have 167.54 sales. You can't have a fractional amount of sales. That's true, but don't worry about it. This would be a great interpretation of this coefficient. There's two different coefficients. There's this one and there's this one. We just interpreted B. We want to interpret A as well, that negative 1.533. What's that mean? Well, that tells you how much we expect Y to increase by each time X increases by one. So we expect Y to increase by negative 1.533. Maybe it's easier to think about it as we expect Y to decrease by 1.533. Each time X increases by one. Recall that X is the temperature and Y is the sales. So this is telling us how much we expect sales to drop by each time temperature increases by one degree. So maybe on a zero degree day, I'd expect 167.54 sales, um, but for each one degree increase in temperature, I expect, and then whatever that number was, 1.533 less sales. So again, three things you wanna be able to do here. First thing, maybe this, I'll say them again and try to say them in a more logical order. First thing, calculate your LSR line. That's this guy right here. Let's understand what buttons to press on your calculator to get your calculator to tell you that value of A and that value of B. And as a reminder, that's stat and then calc and then linreg AX plus B. 
spits out this value of A and this value of B, and you write them in this form. Don't forget your X, and then you're done. First thing, calculate your LSR line. Second thing, put that LSR line on your scatter plot. So this is new, but it's involving things we did in a previous video because you need to be able to make a scatter plot to include your LSR line on the scatter plot. There's a couple of different ways you can do that, um, but I'm fine with you just rounding these numbers off and then typing those into the Y equals function in your calculator. There's a way that you can get your calculator to use the exact values rather than the rounded values, but I find that it's more trouble to have students memorize how to do all that than to just have them round it and give me an approximation, we're good. So second thing is draw something kind of like what you show, I showed you in blue here on your scatter plot. And then third thing is interpret the coefficients of your LSR line in the context of the example. So tell me what negative 1.533 means in terms of temperature and hot chocolate or whatever example I give you on a test. And tell me what 167.54 means in terms of whatever the example is on the test. If you can do those three things, that's everything I was going for out of this video.